so I am doing a couple things here. Um, trying to figure out my video camera, but also trying to video that I'm getting ready to turn this station into a Mama Jamma cup turner station. So, it's probably going to be a long process, so I'm probably going to speed up parts of the video, but I'm going to try to include instructions and links and more information than I've seen on any of the other videos on how to turn this workstation into a six cup turner. Stay tuned. Hope you like the video. Okay, so I'm going to work on putting my six cup turner on this hyper tough workstation that we got from Harbor Freight. You can say I've already got the workstation together. I'm just going to be doing the recording of how to build the six cup turner onto the station. I'm going to show you a list of the supplies that I'm using. I've got six of these motors. I got them off Amazon. These are the two and a half to three revolutions per minute and I'm not real sure I think this is the slower one I think there's one that also it says five to six R per minute so we'll see I've got six of these I think I'm also going to need these screws to screw the motor to the either the PVC pipe or the washer oh, and I don't have the washers up here this is the motor adapter it comes with the little black screws that holds it onto this back part of the motor but it does not come with the screw that goes in the end of it if you can see it right there so that's what these screws are, and I got those at Lowe's. Like I said, the motors and these motor adapters I ordered off Amazon. I'll put links in the video for that. I also have six of these toggle switches. Those also ordered off Amazon. Um, I've got six of these. I'm not really sure what you call them. They're half inch because my pipe is half inch. It's a male on that end, or a female on that end, and it's just plain on that end. Then here is the male adapter that will go into that, and then the pipe goes in this end. I've got six caps. I'm kind of combining the making of two different cup turners, so I'm not sure if I'm going to use these caps or if I'm going to use the white washers, which I need to figure out where they are. And then I've got my primer and pipe glue there that I'll use to attach the pipe together. Let me find those washers and I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm back. I also will need these self-drilling metal screws. And here are the white washers that I might use to attach the pipe to the end of the motor. I'm not sure. Got these off of Amazon. Whoops, it's up. No, it's not. Got those off of Amazon. Comes in a box of 25. You only need six. Just got a few screwdrivers there. I've got my piece of wood here that I got at Lowe's. Trying to find the size. It's 48 inches long. I believe it's five inches wide. I'll have to cut probably about an inch off of that. It's a little bit wider than my station. I also have this 
aluminum angle so it's just like a corner and we'll be using that to support the, the cup turner shelf if you will itself it will go from the corner here down to the table and then there'll be another piece going from side to side as a support bracket all right so um, let me get situated and I'll be back one other thing I'm going to be using is zip ties out of this pack I've got every size needed I'm probably just going to use these two smaller sizes uh, this pack came from, I believe, Harbor Freight. Alright, I'm still just kind of checking this out. Here is the aluminum angle that I got from Lowe's. It's 1 16th by 1, and I got two 6 foot sections. You're also going to need a level for this. I did remember a couple other things you're going to need. We needed, we used some tin snips to cut this aluminum angle. Uh, and then you're going to need a file to file down the rough edges. You'll need some pliers to get it back to where it's square. And I'll be back. Okay, since I'm a crafter and not a builder, what I'm doing is I've got this piece of wood just laying on the, the bench part of my workstation. I've got it squared up on the other end where it's just perfectly even. I'm just going to make a mark where I need to cut this board off. And actually I've got two of these boards. One will be going this way. And then the other one will be sitting on top of that back here, and that will be where the cup turners are coming out of. Next, I have my angle iron, actually my angle aluminum, and it's going to go on this corner, and I want it to go from the top to the table. So it's too long for me to do it that way, so I'm actually going to have to try to measure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sit this, this yardstick right on the table. And it looks like I'm going to need to cut this angle iron at 25 and 3 quarters. So I'm going to need two pieces at 25 and 3 quarters, one for each end. I'm going to mark this, I'm going to go outside and cut it, and I'll be back. There's the washer and uh, I don't know what happened to the other oh, side. There it is.
So on the aluminum angle, we had to pre-drill the holes to match the screws that are holding the top of the workbench together. Had to call for reinforcements because I couldn't do it. So hubby's in here doing all the work. So you want that this and the same. Same thing, so <coughs> yeah. You definitely have to have more than two hands to do this project. What we're doing now is just taking the screws out on the top. I'm going to mark on the back of the angle iron where he needs to drill for the drill the holes for the screws. Did the other screw fall on the floor? I heard something fall and I don't see the other screw. Oh yeah, yeah, you found it. That will be in in here underneath this. Okay. So it's going to be basically supporting that. This is not to the edge of the. To the inside, we'll see. We may clamp, and I, I moved it, but we can put it to the inside of the metal. Okay. So it's going to be like you see in the front here. All right. Yeah. All right. Put it. This mine's put it under right your here. board. Oh. So I need to unclamp. Yeah. It. And then we'll reset them. Okay. Like that. Loosen off a little bit. Where do these go? Those go like this board goes on top of that, and that goes on the top of that. Okay. Although I thought that was supposed to be underneath here too, supporting this end. Oh, no, that's not right. because the board's going to be here. Oh, you would have supporting this up the top. under it. Yeah. Okay. So really? So then if this is going to go in here. Yeah. Like this. I may have cut these two off. I think you're right, see? 
When I do this, see where they come out? It squares it up. Okay. And then the other board goes on. Whoops, goes on top of this. This one's got to be cut, don't no, it? No, I cut them both. Split the difference with that gap. Yeah, because I. Oh, that's fine. I was trying to give it a little bit of. Yeah, that's play. good. So. All right, the now. main thing is making sure it's level. All right. Just as long as we get everything level so that epoxy's not running the wrong way. So you want me to just go ahead and screw yeah, I mean this in? Are we going to be able to cut the circles in this board with it attached? Yeah. Okay. With that whole saw, yeah. just a shelf. Yeah. The only thing we're going to have to do is, as long as we can drill the holes through here, and we've got room to do what we need to do with the switches mm -hmm. and the motors back here. I mean, honestly, it seems like we could just nail this to this piece of wood. Or screw it. Or yeah, I'll, I'll drill, pre-dress some holes and run some wood screws. Alright, is this pretty level? I need to pop the screws here, so I find that I measure. This is pretty darn level on this side. What have you got? Let's see. The bubble's in between the two middle lines, but it's a little bit more to this line. Does that mean the front needs to go? back needs to go up. I mean, it's pretty darn close, but... Yeah, it's pretty good as far as level. Here's what I'm going to do. Oh, you want me to take this off and clamp it to the back? Yeah. You have to adjust it. And make sure it's where you want it.
get a... That's why I was thinking that I shouldn't be going into the board. Well, I can back them up a little bit and put it where you want them and zoop, go through the board, okay? Now we're securing the top to the front with some brass wood screws. So he just pre-drilled some holes to put the brass screws in to secure the top to the front. That way the, the board won't split. Wood is this? Some guy was watching the other day making something. Said you have to pre-drill on pine, or it will just split all the way out. Is this pine? Yeah, I think so. It's either hmm. pine or fir. He's making his wife a six-cup turner that was six foot long. So they had an eight-foot wide closet, and she was going to put the cup turner in the closet, and she did. It looked good. center lines on the Three and ten. 
And the plugs. That's the center. Okay, now there's going to be six cup holders. So one, two, three. Side. And then one, two, three. So the center will. They won't be one in the center. The center will offset between the third and the fourth one. You see what I'm saying? Here's my thought process of the whole thing. If I'm putting six cups on there and it's 47 inches wide, that means each cup is going to have X amount of inches to itself. Yeah. And then you put the hole right in the middle of that. Yeah, and so I'm going to go down and get a compass. Okay. And we'll lay it out the way Jerry would. Okay. Your dad. Let's do it the dad way. Big He'd already stretch. be having to come apart right now because I can't do math. Where's my engineer daughter when you need her? Just saying. All right, we're still trying to figure out how to lay out these holes to get them on center. Seven and three quarters, or you said seven and seven eighths. Forty-seven divided by six is seven point eight three, I think it said. So, if we're going to go center of that, you want my phone? No, I need that uh, measuring tape. Because I'm going to set this compass to walk it off. Okay. And this is not going to be perfect, but it's going to be close. So you'll have to kind of do your own measuring, kind of figure it out. We just know we're going to have six cups on here. We're trying to get the holes as close to center in each section as we can so that I'll have room to work with the cups. So we think each cup is going to have seven and three quarters inches of room to work. So that needs to be half of that, right? Mm -hmm. Little dot. So you're saying here's the center of the first one, okay? Three, four, five, six. All right, one more thing. From here, four and eight. Four and sixteenth. It's close that's, enough. That's yeah. That's pretty dang close. Okay. <laughs> So then, I guess the next thing would be to make sure that these centers are the same amount from the bottom. And what we need is a, you got a little square. Okay. Run them both. center of the entire board or just this line here? I think I want it in the center of the hole. Okay. Six and a half. So it'll say three and a quarter.
Okay, you set it at nine and three and a quarter. Nine and three and a quarter. Now we need to determine okay. the PVC pipe in the hole so saw. The hole saw thing should be right in there. And then here is the half inch PVC. I wish that smallest one's gonna be pretty big, but I mean it just has to come through it. It doesn't have to. Okay. You use that. Just as long as it's coming through there, and when it's attached to the motor, it's even. No. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, you did, didn't uh -huh. you? <laughs> Sorry, borrowed it. Somebody else, one of the other videos I was watching, they were making the holes, and they were, they had some kind of bit. Like a flat bit? Yeah, like a flat bit. Yeah, I was like, that's weird. Yeah, that's weird. Okay. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and do some more of these bits. Okay. Let's see what we got. Okay. Let's see what we got. Ready as I will be. Okay, I discovered something. This screw in the bottom of this is like wood. It's just on the metal, but we'll. Ooh! Scared me. Well, I mean, it's okay as long as it's, I mean, I think it's fine, but I just know one of the stuff. I think yeah, it's we'll, hot, don't it? Yeah. Woo! Okay, that's one. All right, we've got all the holes drilled. Six of them on center. Now what are we gonna do? Next step. Next step is probably gonna be figuring out where PVC has to go to figure out where the motor's going to go. Of course, it looks like it's going to be right, well, I don't know, it might be there. It might be right in between them two holes. We can always drill a hole. Do they lay on the bottom of the hole or center them or? Yeah, they lay 
okay. at the bottom. I got a suggestion. Have you got enough? You got enough that pipe to work with. You know what I'd do? What? I'd cut a piece like about where your hands at as a guide, and I'd put one of them inserts in the end of it, and I could put a mark like a, even a drill bit in that hole, and you put it through and level it, and you mark your hole across the back. Alright, so this is half inch, schedule 40, which is why I bought all of my fittings to fit. Yep. So this, the little washer is supposed to go up to the end of that. Let's see more. So let me just see. I'm going to put this in here, all the way back there. And then it has to come out here. The video I saw said 13 inches. So, let me see. Woo! I'm saying if we just cut this off at 13 inches, I think it'll be a usable piece. I'll make then... you mark on it. Here's the cutter. Another thing I did not mention earlier, you'll need PVC cutters. Right here, purple. Oh. Okay. Voila. Clean is everything. I have cut PVC with the what is that saw? I cut the wood with. Excel. No, that the circle saw. Yeah. Circle saw. I did cut PVC with the circle saw before. It worked. So now we're trying to figure out what he's doing right now is taking away some of the material on the inside of the PVC pipe in order for that little white washer. Little white washer to fit inside of the PVC pipe. So you have to take, you have to take some of that out in order for this to fit in there. What's going to happen is this is going to go in the pipe motor the motor is going to be connected with this little motor adapter to this washer that's going to be in the pipe so that when the motor is going it's turning the pipe He happens to have a cone looking bit for the drill. You could do it with a hand file. So here's the drill bit that he's using. I'm not sure what is that called? A reamer bit? Yeah, step so down reamer. You can use that to deal with the inside of your pipe to get that washer going. Out of all the craft supplies I have, I don't think I have any super glue. And we're supposed to super glue that into the pipe. So I'm going to have to figure that out or either locate some super glue. Once you get the glue, that will be about right. I'll go a little bit more. Okay. <coughs> uh, and what you're going to do is... going to use these 
these screws or bolt or whatever you want to call them are going to go in the washer in the end of the washer so he's got the washer in the end of the pipe you're going to have to put this on the washer and into the motor adapter onto the motor and then you'll glue it onto the pipe uh, we'll try to do that as we go along or hey here's another way so right now we're just discussing how to attach this, you need the, how many of these washers is in that box 25 so you just add more washers to it to take up some space six is what you you got yeah okay let's do that and that'll give you a lot of strength too Stack some. Here's my thing that I'm seeing with that though, and maybe I'm not thinking about it right. Okay, so the screw is in the end of the motor adapter thing. Yep. And the washer is super glued to the pipe. Uh huh. Is it also super glued to the screw? No, because it's it, tight enough that it, it'll it'll uh, it'll drive it. Oh, because it looked like it was going to be loose and the screw was going to be turning and the washer wasn't. Okay, watch this. Okay. So you got four of them on there. Might mm. just need three. Let me try it with three. Because I want this hole to match up with my set screw. Right. Let me try it with three. The other two videos didn't really, I mean. They told you the right. Well, size, I don't even know that they the told length. me the size. I went to Lowe's with that motor adapter and said, what size? Do I need to fit this? Now I'm going to need this fourth one. Maybe now, they I can, said what size and I missed well, it. Well, I can see where when we get this done here, it's going to be pretty good. All right, Deb. Okay, so right now what we're trying to do is make sure all of our pipes are level. So, this is what we ended up with. We have four of those plastic washers in here with the screw and the motor adapter and then he reamed out the end of the cap and then we glued it on here. Sucker ain't going nowhere. I'll show you the steps as we go on the next one. Okay, so here's what he's done. There are four of those washers on there attached with that screw into the motor mount, motor adapter mount, whatever it's called. So he reamed out the pipe a little bit more so that two of these washers are going to fit inside the pipe. We're going to super glue that inside the pipe. Right now what he's doing is making a hole in the PVC cap. is this, making a hole inside that, that this brass thing, motor thing, will come out of. Then, once we glue this to the pipe, and he's got the hole in the cap, we're going to put the cap on there and glue it to the PVC pipe. So right now he's just using his knife to clean up where he's reamed out the hole in the cap for the brass thing to go.
perfect. Okay, so we've got the washers attached to the brass thing with the screw. We're going to super glue this inside the pipe, the first two washers, and then that's going to fit in there like that, and we're going to glue that to the PVC pipe. Voila. We're going to pause and do some more of that. We'll be back. Okay, so we're back to finish up the construction of the six cup turner. We've got two pipes left to do to put the washers and the motor mounts on the end of them. And so that's where we're going to start. We've also got some more things that you're going to be required really to have to get this whole process done. I'll probably take pictures and link that in the description of the video. So let me get this camera angle situated and we'll get started. Just as a refresher in case the previous video missed it. We have half inch pipe, PVC pipe. This is the apparatus we've come up with. It's got the motor adapter. It's got four of the plastic washers on the screw. He is reaming out the inside of the pipe so that these so that two of these washers will fit down inside there and then we're going to super glue those and then he'll make a hole in a cap it'll fit on there i'll show you that again here when he gets one situated right now he's using a step down bit in order to ream out the middle of that pipe so that the washers will fit down in there. We're only looking to get two washers out of the four. We've got a stack of four on there. We want to get two of those washers down inside that pipe so that we can super glue it. And then we're going to put the cap on top of that. So that's what we're working on now. So you got it where two washers are in there. So now we need to super glue. We're using Gorilla super glue. You can use whatever super glue you have on hand. I'm going to put it on the washers. And then he'll kind of line it up. And he will use the PVC, what's it called, cement, to put yes. the cap on. And so that's going to also help this stay in place. I'm going to let you put that. That's number five of six, and I've about used this whole tube of glue so make sure you got plenty of that all right so here's what it looks like you got your 13 inch half inch pipe pvc pipe you've got four of the washers on the screw attached to the motor adapter Right now, oh, well, he's working on the other one. Then, what we're going to do is, he's going to drill a hole in this. It's going to go on top of this and just make it more secure. 
So I'll get the other pipe situated like this and then we'll show you how to deal with the cap. I'm just putting the super glue on the on the tube at the bottom because those are the only two that are going to actually go in the pipe. I just drill a, a hole in it and then I use this to open it up. Okay. So he'll drill just a starter hole in the lid just and then he's using this. Step down, step down drill. This is not the step down, is it? Well, that's, that's one so of So it's a, like a, it looks like a cone. And so the farther in you go with it, the wider the hole is. You're just going to make it wide enough so that the motor adapter can come out the top of the cap. Okay, so you're just making it to fit over that. That's just going to secure it and, and make it really stable. It's quarter. So he's going to use a quarter inch bit to start with. And then he'll use the other one to make the hole as big as it needs to be. You want to make sure you're getting the hole in the center of the cap. And so that's your starting point. And then you're just going to ream it out to make sure it fits around the... So that's the starting point in the center. He's using the pliers there to just hold it. And he's working from both sides. He goes from the top to the bottom, top to bottom, to make it be an even hole. So he's doing a little bit of extra trim out with his pocket knife. Just to be a little bit more precise. He's just cutting away the excess from the top and the bottom, just to clean it up some. Yeah, so you don't right. have all the burrs sticking out. Okay. All right. So now you want me to hold this while you put the. Yeah. So now we've got this with the super glue in the pipe. He's going to use the cement that you would normally use for plumbing. And we're going to go around it. And then he's going to put the cap on. And that's going to keep everything stable. Wiping off the excess. Alright, so now we have the pipe on top of the washers with the motor adapter coming out of it. Very stable. Just going to let that dry. We're going to put the other one together. Yeah. You want me to hold it? I got it. You want to All right, so I'm going to take you up while he's doing that. 
let you look at the station. So, we've got the six holes drilled. They're marked off. So our next process is going to be drilling through the back pegboard, Richie, to make the hole for the mm -hmm. motors to mount mm -hmm. on the back. I'm going to try to zoom you in. I may have to do a different angle to see what's going on there. I think I probably will. Okay, so what we're trying to show you now is we have we had already marked the center holes in the front of our board here. So we've got six holes on the front of the board. What he's doing now is using that extension to drill through that and into the pegboard on the back of the workstation. And I may have to redo that when he gets closer to where the camera actually is. So right now, we had already marked where the holes needed to be. To keep the cup arms level compared to where we had the holes cut on the front of this. So he's just drilling through the pegboard on the back of the station where we can put the motor adapter through that to attach to the workstation. Hopefully that's where you can see what's going on. I don't know. And the final one is going to be the closest one. So we went around to the back of the workbench with the step down bit to make the hole that he just drilled big enough to fit the shaft on the motor so that we can put the shaft of the motor through that pegboard on the back and then attach it to the pipe with the motor adapter on the end of it. Okay, so what he's doing right now is deburring a little bit from the front side. These right here are the little tiny black screws that will go from the side of this motor adapter to the motor. So the motor is going to go in the end right there and the little black screws go on the sides. That's what attaches this to the motor. Here's the motor. There's the hole where the little screws go. Okay, you ready for one? I need uh, two of those little set screws in the wrench. No They're T tiny. There's the wrench. I'm going to have to readjust the camera, maybe. Okay, there's one. Tiny. Tiny. So he's putting the set screws in. One on 
each side. They're tiny. Right now he's just getting them situated in there. We'll put the motor on the back of the pegboard and then attach the pipe to it. All right, so the motor is going on the back. There you can see it coming through the back of the pegboard. Now he's got the motor adapter that's attached to the pipe. The set screws are already in the gold piece that he's attaching to the motor and then he'll just tighten that down. Is there anything I can do? Do you want to hold it and let me try to tighten it? Or? I'll get it. That's a pretty good shot right there. You can see it pretty good. The motor adapters came from Amazon. But you do have to get the screw that goes in the end of them from... I got mine from Lowe's. Uh, apparently, you can get them from Harbor Freight or Home Depot. Uh, maybe Home Depot. Okay, there's one. That's... All right, so there's one. Okay, so we've run into an issue. So we're finding out that we need to take the top board off in order to be able to access putting the pipes onto the motors from the back side. It's hard to get your hand in there. So we're taking that top board off so that we can have access to attach the motor to the motor adapter. So that's where we're at right now. Okay, so my view right now is from behind the workbench. We have all six motors attached to the poles. You can see each motor has two cords coming from it. That'll be one will go to the power cord, one will go to the switch. And again, you can see got these off Amazon. There's just a picture of what they are. 2.5 to three revolutions a minute. And so, let me go around here and show you what the front looks like. So, all of the pipes are attached to the motor. They look secure. They're coming out the front. And so, what's the next thing? We'll line everything up and secure the screw the motors down to the base. Next thing, we're gonna screw the motors down to the back. Those two screw holes on each side. So we're gonna attach those and we'll be back. Okay, so our next process is we've got these little felt circles. Where did we get these at? Lowe's. Got them at Lowe's. We're going to put these underneath the pipes to help them turn easier and give it a little bit of cushion and just give it some more support. So we're going to put the little felt circles down on the bottom underneath the pipe here. And then we're going to level the pipes before we screw the motors to the back. Because it's very important to make sure that your pipes are level. So, let me, which one are you working on? That one down there.
They've just got some sticky on the back. They'll conform to the bottom. That's just going to give it a little bit of like a softness, like a barrier, so it's not just grinding on the wood. It's kind of like a bearing. Yeah. It's just going to make the pipe rotate easier instead of just being on the wood. And then we'll make sure that it's level before we screw the motor down to the back. So I'll try to remember all of the pieces and components that we've used and put them in the description of the video. Again, this is just our take on this. Not saying it's the only way, not saying it's the right way, but this is the way we're doing it. Just wanted to give people a kind of step-by-step -step how to make it work. So that's where we are now. Do you want to keep the top board off until we yeah, level right and now. all that? Okay. Yeah. So, do I need to be back there? Yeah. With the motor? Mm. And so you can tell me if it needs to go up. What or you down need to do or... is just push in. Okay. And and I'd have a marker. Uh, I got a purple marker. Yeah. And you need to make a good little dot. When I tell you that's good. Okay. But have it where that wire is straight down. Okay. I mean, that's where it is, right there. Now, what kind of, how are we going to fasten that to the pegboard? I would suggest... Because it's going to be coming from the back to the front. Uh -huh. I suggest wood screws. Okay. That's a number six by half. It's right here. So this is a six by a half brass wood screw. That's what we're going to use to attach the motor to the back of the pegboard. And it'll be sticking through just a little bit, but I don't think that's going to be an issue because your hand's not going to be back there anyway. That'll be back behind where the cap and the pipe is. So we'll just go for that. Honestly, there are four holes on the back of that motor. I don't know why you would need to use all four. Do you feel the need to use all four or just two? Or Not really as close as they are together. Yeah, they're really close together. So we're just putting screws in the top two holes on the back of the motor. That should be more than secure. Now, I will say some of them did align up partially with the hole on the back of the pegboard. So, you might want to put more than two, if that's the case. If one of the top ones lined up in the center, I just dropped that, in the center of the hole on the back of the pegboard, you might want to put three in there, just to give it a little bit of more support. Did that one that you just did, was it like in the hole? It, no, it was... Uh, there were a couple good. that kind of were partially in the hole, and so I'm not sure how sturdy that will be. If that makes sense. You can see right there where the screw's coming through. That's not a problem. Your hands aren't going to be back there. It's not going to be bothersome. There's going to be the wood against here. Now, when you do yours, you can make your piece of wood on the top go from the front all the way to the back. We didn't choose to do that, um, but you can. That's just totally up to you. So, looks like 
depending on how your motors come out, which you can't see that one, you could put one in the top hole and one in the bottom hole the other side. Just make sure it's secure. You don't have to use four screws to put the motor on the back of the, the station. Two screws should be enough. Just place them where it's going to be the most sturdy. Leave that up to you. So what we're doing right now is trying to figure out the placement of the switches. I don't want the switches directly above my cup. I want them offset a little. I went through and kind of divided the space in half and then realized that I only had five switches. So I had to back it up a little bit. So I'm going two holes to the side of where the pipe is so that the switch is slightly offset and it's not directly above where my tumbler is going to be and then when you get down to the other end down there it's going to have to be on the inside of where the cup is according to the way we're trying to lay it out so it's up to you you figure out how high you want your switches how low you want your switches where you want your switches and then you're going to have to just make a hole in the back pegboard for the switch to go through and then it's got a like a washer and a face plate which is up here so he's going to poke the switch through from the back and then you've got this and this that goes on the front if you can see that let me see if I can go in you can't see that one. I'll get it closer on another one. And then that goes on the front. So you've got on and off. at the top, the off at the bottom, and so on the back, I'll show you, show you in a minute, the wires coming straight down on the bottom of the back. That switch position, they come out the top for on and off, <coughs> where it's, that's the way it's made to be, on at the top and off that way. Alright, where's the next hole? It looks good though. On the back. Is that the next one? The next one is where's this one. This one? Here's my question because I think a lot of people are going to be asking this question and I'm only asking because I don't know. How do you know which way is on or off? Because that little tag tells you on and off and there's a key in it that will only go one way where to be wrapped. See that? It goes in that slot, and that's on and off. Okay, can you show that to them? So, my question is, how do you know on and off? So, he's saying the wire's going up. You can see on that tab, it says on. It says off on the bottom. That might be a little more clear. And that plate that says on and off only goes on one way so when you put this on there 
the the wires for the switch are going to be coming out the top not the bottom in order for it to be right okay so I just wanted to show you here is the switch we're using but I did just want to show you how we're installing it so you take it out it's kind of all wound up you're going to unwrap the wires going to be like this okay you're going to take off this little washer looking thing which is the very top piece you're going to take off this little thing that shows you on and off and then you're also going to take off this little washer it's, it's like a hexagon washer. It's all the way down to the bottom. It's a nut. It's a nut. It's a hex nut. It's a hex nut. You're going to take that off. So you got three pieces off. Then you're going to take this, just like this, with the wires coming out of the top, and you're going to stick it through the back of the pegboard. We're going to do that now. We'll be back. Alright, so now it shows we have all the motors attached. We have all the switches attached. You can see the motor wires are coming out the bottom. The switch wires are coming out the top. Now the next thing to do is we'll put that board back. We're going to put the board back on the top to cover that up. And then I think the next thing is going to be figuring out the power source yeah. to the motor and the switches. And we'll be back. I'm not sure. I think we might have missed it earlier. Right now he's working on putting a junction box. He has just an extension cord. It's got the plug. It's a two-piece extension cord that you can split in half. One part will be going to the top, to the switches. The other piece will be going to the bottom, to the motors. Alright. I need a uh that those uh, sheet metal screws, the button heads that you got on the front. So right now you're just going to attach the junction box? Yeah, and then I'll be able to fly with it. Using the self-tapping screws that we used earlier. So you're just screwing that to the metal frame of the workbench. Mm Guys and girls, I can tell you that I thought I was going to be able to do this project by myself. I couldn't. I uh, think you're going to need more than one person to deal with this. If you can do it by yourself, more power to you and, and good luck. But just showing you how we're doing it. Not saying this is the only way to do it. You can see that he's got the extension cord in that junction box with the raw ends hanging out. It goes down there. I'm not sure. I'm not an electrician. But he 
knows what he's doing, so we're just going <coughs> to go with it. There's a, another roll of this black somewhere. It might be on the front. So, he has uh, three different rolls of electrical cord, I guess, electrical wire. And so that's 1619 white. He's got white, black, green. The green is for the ground. One's for positive, one's for negative, and one's for the ground. That's all I know. But on this, we won't be using the green because these motors don't have the Oh, green. so you're not using... So, don't have to worry about the green. So you need white motors. and black. And let me get to where you can see. So you can see the switches, you can see the motors, you can see the cord. This is going to require the ability to solder. So he's cutting the wires coming from the motors. So you're cutting the one coming out of the motor to the right shorter than the one coming out of the motor to the left. Is that right? Yeah. Now, he's taking the plastic off the wire on the right-hand side. That's going to allow him to connect it to the extension cord that's going to be the power source for the motor. The white wire is being attached to the shortest wire on the farthest motor. What is that you have there? Uh, shrink tube. Shrink tube. So, shrink tube, does that mean you're not going to have to solder the wire? Yes, they'll, they'll be soldered. <laughs> oh, so you are going to solder the wire, yeah. but then that will go on top of it. Mm -hmm. So you're cutting a piece of white that goes from the first motor and that will reach over to the second motor? Yeah. So is that going to connect the two short pieces from yeah, motor to motor? It. It'll be part of it. And then he put a piece of the shrink thing on the motor before he, I mean, on the wire connected to the first motor before he connects the white wire to the second motor. Okay, so right now he's still working on connecting all of the motors together. So he cut the wire coming out of the right side of the motor about halfway. He has some white wire <coughs> that he's connecting from the short wire of the motor to the white wire, then to the next short wire, then to some more white wire, to the next short wire. But he's also using these heat shrink tubing assortment things that he's putting on the wire before he solders it together and then that's going to be the cover for the connection of the wires where he has soldered them together and that will make it be like one solid wire going from motor to motor to motor to motor to extension cord. Let me see if I can get in a little closer. So right now all he's doing is attaching the short blue wire to the white wire so he just cut the end off of the white wire he's going to put a couple pieces of tubing onto the white wire then he's going to solder that to the next short blue wire so a small tubing piece 
or a medium. Or just two of these is good either way. It's easier with this too. It's better. So, a couple pieces of the heat shrink tubing on the white wire. Then he's going to connect the white wire to the short blue wire. And then he's going to solder those two wires together. Just prepping the next white wire right now. Okay, so he's adding a piece of white wire to the original white wire and blue wire. And now he's going to solder all three wires together. So again, white wire coming off the short wire of the motor next to it, going to the short blue wire from the last motor, Putting the little sleeve things on there. Strip the ends of the wire. Attach the white wire with the sleeve thing onto the short blue wire of the last motor. Add the, the other piece of white wire. So now you have three wires together right there. And then solder those three wires together. Okay, now you can uh, heat shrink these. Okay, so now we're going to heat shrink those but in I'll the place. But I'll take this wire, that'll be the new, and I don't like the fact that that is a green cord, but that's what it was and that's what I used. Uh, that's just what it is, it's good, it's just a color I don't like for a, a cord. So, and ultimately, what do we do now? Heat this shrink that? We'll or? wind up, solder to that, and put it in the box and covered. Okay. But I would heat shrink these now, and I'll secure them, <clears throat> and then we'll work on the, the uh, power to the switches. All right, we're going to get the heat gun ready, and we'll be back. So right now he's just using the heat gun to shrink down those, what are they called? The uh, shrink tape connections. <clears throat> shrink tape connections over the, where he connected the blue wires from the motor to the white wire. So he soldered the blue and the white. And then he put these shrink tape connections on there, which is better than using electrical tape. 
he wants to make sure that this is very fire resistant, that everything's protected. So basically it's just shrink wrapping down around the wires, but it's an insulated shrink wrap. And I'm double covering it. So he's putting one on, shrinking it, and then putting another one. It's double coverage. <clears throat> so that's how we're making the connections on the wire with the motor. We'll do that. So right now what we're doing is working on the top. <coughs> Hooking the switches to the motor. He's using this heat shrink tubing that he got from Harbor Freight. He's using the red, which indicates to him that it's a hot wire. So he's going from the right side of the switch down to the left wire from the motor and then he will solder the wires and then shrink that heat tubing to it and we'll be back Alright, so I'm getting ready to solder these. First time ever soldering. Don't really know what the heck I'm doing, but I'm going to try it. So, uh, I guess I'm going to yeah, just get touch the it wire to there. hot. Mm -hmm. And then just. And then I'm going to touch the solder to it. Am I touching the solder to the wire or to the end of this? To the thing? wire, and that's good. You got it. That's and it. And then, so that's it. So yeah. Was that too much? No, oh, that's yeah, good. Yeah, dripped off. That's good. Just keep going, just like you're going. All right. <clears throat> so touch it to the wire. Make them all just look like that. If it drips, don't worry about touch it. Touch the solder to it. And the just soldering. don't let it drip on your leg. Uh, it's stuck. I just don't know. So I'm touching the wire and I'm getting the wire hot and then I'm putting the solder on there mm -hmm. and then I'm That's touching correct. the solder, not necessarily to the soldering gun, although it might. I got one down there that I wasn't really sure about. Maybe this one. What if it's not smooth? Just revisit it. It'll be fine. As long as it's melted through, it'll be good. So it doesn't necessarily have to be move, smooth. It just needs to be covered. Alright, I think I did good. I think they're all good. Alright, so now what? Now we're going to push that <coughs> sleeve thing up on there. Can mm -hmm. I turn this off? So we turn that off. These have are cooled down enough. Let me see what we're doing right. Yep. Okay. So then we're gonna bend that down. Yeah, and to and push it up in the middle, midway. Up on there. Push it down. Put your little sleeve up there. First time using this heat gun too. So. I asked earlier, why could you not just use electrical tape? He said this was the safest way to go. But he would feel safer about using this than just putting electrical tape or one of those wire nuts. He felt better about doing it this way instead of using electrical tape or wire nuts. 
So, he is a maintenance manager that runs a really big plant, so he knows what he's talking about, so we're going to just follow that lead and just go with it. This may not be the easiest way to go, but he says it's the safest way to go, so we're going the safety route. And if you can hear, we've got little puppies downstairs, and we sure don't want any mishaps going on. We don't want anything catching on fire when we're not here and our puppies are here. So we're trying to do the safest thing. All right, so right now, what he's doing is putting a protective wire wrap around all of the connections that we've made with the wire, even though we've soldered them. And we've also put the shrink wrap seal around them. He wanted to be more than safe and put some protective wire wrap around those wires. So that's what he's doing now. I'm going to show you what it looks like. Did you get this from Harbor Freight? Yeah. So this came from Harbor Freight. It's one quarter inch by 14 feet protective wire wrap. And you can see that it just looks like a black plexi tubing. And it split to where you can snap and it everything split in, in half. So it just goes around the tubing that you've done. So he's got it started right here at the end, if I can find the end. There it is. And it just goes around everything, and he's just working it around where we put the white wire into the blue wire on the bottom. So this is going right now on the white wire and the blue wire that came out of the right side of the motor. And right now, if you see this, this is the blue wire coming out of the left side of the motor, going up to the right side of the switch, and it's got that red sleeve on it that I just heat shrunk to it. Are you going to put that flex stuff on the other wire too? Yeah. So he's also going to put the Everything flex stuff covered. on the blue wire going to the switch with the red shrink wrap. That way everything is just double, triple insulated where we've made all the connections. He's going to finish doing that. We'll be back. We got the power wire coming from the junction box, and it goes up through this sleeve and will connect to the feed side of the switch. And they'll be soldered and shrink wrapped and put away and secured, and then we'll do the final connection. Get out of your way. You have to plug her back in. All right. So uh, I thought it was plugged in. No, that's the soldering iron. There it is. It is plugged in. So I'm gonna shrink wrap the connections from the switch 
to the black wire. I'm not really sure at this point in time. The main power. But we're going to shrink wrap everything except for the very first one because that's going to be the main power source. So. So now you're just putting the black wire into the mm -hmm. junction box and yeah. that black wire has all the other black wires connected to it? Exactly. This is also where the extension cord is going into, if you can see that. That will plug in to the side of the workbench. Alright, so he's connecting the black wires to the green wire. He's connecting the black wires to one side of the green wire. He's going to connect the white wire to the other side of the green wire. Which that was a green extension cord and that's what I used. You know it's... Yeah, not a green wire but green extension cord. You can get an extension cord or somebody has used a replacement lamp cord. You just have to make sure that the cord can be separated in the middle into two pieces. You're going to put black to one side, white to one side. One side's going to run the motors, one side's going to run the switches, and Somehow it completes a circuit. Um, yeah, this goes through the switch and then to the motor, and then this is the neutral that supplies the uh, motors with the, the neutral. So, this is how each cup turner can either be on or off. You use the switch to turn it on or off. If you didn't have the switches in here and you just wired the motors and gave it power, that just means all six cup turners would be going. If you turned the thing on, they'd all be going. With this, you can have one going, two going, three going, five going, and whatever. That's the reason for the switch. I'm now going to put the cover on. Shortly, we will be turning this bad boy on, even though it's not finished. We're going to turn it on and just make sure everything works independently, because that's what we've been trying to do. I want six cup turners that I can turn on and off at will as I need. I don't want six going at the same speed for the whole time. I might not need six. Alright, here goes. Here's the green plug. Getting plugged in to the side of the workbench. And then... I'm going to turn on the first one, see if it goes. Look at that. Number one is going around. You can't see it yet. I'm waiting on the writing to come around. Oh. There goes number two. There it goes.
Number three. There it goes. Yeah, forgive all the craziness on the workbench because that's just a product of trying to get this thing going. All spinning around each of their own free will once we hit the switch. We may have to do some fine tuning just to make sure that they're level and that everything's going good. But Here it is so far. We'll be doing some work again tomorrow. We'll share that with you. Okay, so here's where we are now. <clears throat> Had to go to Lowe's today and get two more pieces of pipe. These are, I think they're five foot pieces. They were $1.97 at Lowe's. I don't need two pieces, but my thought process is I'm probably going to make some more, um, I don't know what you even want to call them, some more ends to put my cups on that I can switch in and out. I bought this pool noodle at Walmart. See, it's got that shape to it. This is what I'm going to use on the end of my PVC pipe to go inside my 30 ounce cups. It fits perfectly inside a 30 ounce cup and I'll show you that in a little while. Um, I've got some footballs from Dollar Tree also. I think I have one that I can use to make a 20 ounce cup turner for this one. I actually want to have two so I'm going to end up having four 30 ounce to start with and then two 20 ounce and they'll be interchangeable what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have to cut the length of this pipe down to just a couple inches then I'm gonna have to determine what size pipe I want on this that's then gonna attach to this so this piece if you can see it it's a half inch male coupler that will get glued on the pipe that's sticking out of there this piece smooth on that end grooved on that end will get glued on whatever size piece of pipe I end up cutting and then that will attach to there that will be what makes the arms removable. So if I've got a cup turning on this one, I need to take it off. I can take it off once it's dry or, or you know whatever's going on. If I need to have it off there and spray paint it and then attach it. I just didn't want a solid piece coming out with the cup on there. I want to be able to trade out. So that's what I'm working on right now. Again, here is what the pool noodle looks like that I'm using. This works perfectly. It fits perfectly inside a 30 ounce cup and I'll show you that here in just a little bit. I'm going to actually try to tidy up this workbench just a little bit. Um, Hubby did an awesome job getting everything situated the way that I had it in my head. Um, I'm just going to tidy up a little bit. I might do a little bit of revisiting some of the items that we've used so far. And then I'm going to finish this bad boy off. So give me a minute. Let me do some straightening up. And I'll be back. Okay, so I'm back by the miracle of video recording. Got all the sawdust, everything cleaned up. Um, now what I'm going to show you, the next part is going to be, I've measured a cup on this pool noodle and determined I need pieces that are three and a half inches long. So I'm going to take my hacksaw and I'm going to cut 
three and a half inch pieces of this pool noodle. Then I have these, I'm not really sure what this is called. Husband bottom, he's not up here. It is half inch diameter on this end, but on this end, it fits into a three quarter inch cap. Snug fit. Uh, wrong way. So, pipe goes in this end that's got the little lip on it. Cap goes on that end. Very snug fit. Half inch inside, three quarter outside. I don't remember what he called it. I have six of each of these. That will fit perfectly on the end of my pipe and then into the end of the pool noodle. I am not sure if I'm even going to need to glue that. Um, I'll be gluing this to the end of the pipe, but that is such a snug fit. I don't know that I'm going to need to glue the pool noodle to this. I'm going to mess with it just a little bit and see, because honestly, I think if I put just Gorilla Glue on here, it's such a snug fit that I think it's just going to push the glue away. So, what I'm going to do now is just measure three and a half inches on the pool noodle, and this is going to make a mess too. With my little hacksaw, maybe it won't be too bad. So I've got three and a half inches. I'm just going to mark it. And then I'm just going to, my hacksaw blade is a little warped. going to do this four times because like I said I want for now I'm going to have four 30 ounce handles and then two 20 ounce so again I'm marking three and a half I guess I could go ahead and mark three and a half more that'd be down to seven and then ten and a half would be the fourth one. Go ahead and mark those. I can get all those cut. All right, so I've got that for those four. I didn't make near as much mess as I thought I was going to. Okay, so now what I need to do is determine how long I want the handle on this to go into my cup and my length here. Okay, so as it turns out, as I was trying to figure out, you know, how much pipe needs to be sticking out for the fittings and then how much pipe needs to be here to be in the noodle to go inside the cup and make it straight and everything. So basically what I figured out, if I cut this pipe to one and a half inches, the piece that comes off, once it's in the, the fittings, is the perfect size to make a 30 ounce come right to the edge of the table, if you can see that. So. I'm going to cut this to where it's sticking out an inch and a half. Cut that off using these handy dandy pipe cutters. That's one of the things that you'll need. And then it'll go this male piece will go on the end, on the end there. This piece will be on the other end that goes into the foam. 
and just screw it on there and then that way you can take one off put another one on and so that's what I'm going to be doing inch and a half sticking out from the face of the board on the PVC I'm going to cut it off there what's left is the perfect size to go into the pool noodle to make the next turner so I'm going to work on that and I'll be back all right, so I'm gonna show you cutting the last one. I've got it marked right here at an inch and a half. Gonna be using these to cut it off with. I don't have a whole lot of hand strength, but these things work pretty good. Just putting it right there on the line. And then you just close it all the way together. Open it out so you hear it click. Close it together again. I mean, you've got to use some hand strength. Open it, tear it quick again. It's fixing to go flying off the end. So there we have it. Cut at inch and a half. This piece is roughly three and a half inches that I just cut off there. This will go on the end of this. This goes on here. There you have it. And then that will be glued on to the end of this. I hope I didn't just make all of those too short. I'm going to check it out. We'll be back. Okay, so I just had to second guess myself. Just because that's what I do. So, inch and a half coming out of here, put the male piece on that, that's going to be glued on. Got the female piece on this end with no threads on this end. I don't know what you technically call this piece. This piece is about three and a half inches long. Going to put this piece on there. This is the... piece that's half inch on the inside it fits into this three-quarter cap that's going to go on to this end of it that then will be glued inside the pool noodle which will go inside the cup then this will just attach onto here it's coming right to the end of my station. Uh, so the cup's not hanging over. It's coming right to the very end. And I could shove it up on there just a little bit more. It, it's got room to go on further up just a little bit. I'm going to work on getting all, all these things glued together and I'll be back. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to be using this to glue this piece on here. And I'm going to use it to glue this piece with the no thread ends onto the three and a half inch height. And apparently it's messy. I'm not really sure. I'm going to go around on the inside of this and then put it on there instead of trying to go around the pipe. Hopefully I got enough on that. And then I'm going to go around in the inside of this. I'm going to make sure you get a pretty good coat and then just stick this in there. I'll put it all the way in there. And it's gonna have a little drippage. I don't want it dripping down into the threads though. So I'm just gonna leave it right like that. So I'm just going to do 
that with the rest of them. I bought the pack that has this and the purple primer. Hubby said I didn't really need the primer. Oh, drip that down into the threads. I need to get that off. Sticky, sticky, sticky. I'm just holding the back part of this pipe back behind the wood to push that on there. I don't want to push real hard and push against the motor that's in the pegboard. We come around this way. Okay, so I discovered that this all-purpose cement that you use for the PVC pipe will also connect your pool noodle to the PVC. So what I've done is here's the three and a half inch piece with the female end on that end. I'm going to glue this to this. Well, first of all, I'm going to glue this piece inside the cap. Just going to run it around in there. Make sure you get enough in there. Going to put this piece inside there. Then you're going to put some more glue inside that. going to put this piece inside there. Make sure you push it together. And then we're going to put this piece inside the pool noodle. So what I'm going to do is put the pipe or put the glue inside the pool noodle. Make sure you get a pretty good bit in there. You're going to twist that cap in there till it's even with your cut on the pool noodle. I can already feel that bonding. I'm going to check it just to see how it is. It's a little bit not even that way, but it's pretty level that way. So I'm not going to worry about that because that's going to be up inside the cup. I'm just trying to get the cap even with where I've cut the pool noodle, but I can definitely feel it's already bonding. So I'm going to do four of those for my 30 ounce cups. Then I'm going to try to shave this down a little bit to make it fit in my 20 ounce cup because I just feel like this is more sturdy than a football. Because once you get that shaved off, You've got more surface area touching the cup instead of just the center round part of the football. I'm going to do these four and try to figure out how to make it fit the 20 ounce and I'll be back. Okay, so I was trying to figure out how to make the insert that would fit the 20 ounce cup. 
because obviously this is too big. It fits the 30. So what I did was I took a piece of the pool noodle, sat the 20 ounce cup, centered it as much as I could, and then just took my hacksaw, whatever you call this thing, and cut off the excess. Turned out to be like this. So you can see the difference between this one and this one. It doesn't take much, but you can cut it off. And then, I was worried about the fact that I cut some off. I didn't want the little pieces of foam coming off every time I put it inside the cup. So my husband said, well, you have a heat gun, so once you cut the perimeter off of that, use the heat gun, it will make that seal back. So I did it, and look at that. Where I cut stuff off is perfectly just like it was before I cut it. So it sealed it back, so no worries. It fits perfectly inside the 20 ounce. It makes it very stable. So I'm going to do another one here so you can see. So I'm just going to line that up close to center as I can, and then I'm just going to cut away the corners, basically. And again, be careful. Don't go all the way down to the bottom and cut your base of your station. I'm just lifting up, so I'm basically cutting in the air there. But you can see how the foam, there's just little particles of foam coming off everywhere. I don't want that getting in my epoxy and on my cup. So that's why we're going to kind of shrink that all back down with the heat gun once we get finished cutting all this off. Again, I'm just lifting up when I get down to the bottom. I don't want to be cutting right on the surface of my table. I'm basically just cutting the corners of the pool noodle off so that it will fit down inside the 20 ounce cup. It's going straight down. It's hard to hold the pool noodle and the cup on top. take my heat gun. It's on a pretty low setting. It's on 430 to 570. You can just hit that and I don't know if you can see it in the video but you can just see it melting kind of finishing off those edges and if it's not hot at all it's not blowing hard at all but it's just finishing those edges so that you're not going to have the loose pieces of pool noodle floating around when you're trying to put this in your tumbler all right so i've got my two 20 ounce glued to the arms you can tell that they're 20 ounce because they're cut off a little bit. Just going to let all this stuff dry and I'll be back in a little bit to show you how it looks like when it's going and to revisit some of the stuff that we use just to make sure that you know everything we used in the video. Alright, so I've taken you down. Here's my cup turner. I've got some stuff hanging off the top. Still have a few things to do. But, six cups turning. Six. 
Still have some tightening up to do, but check this out. We did good. It was a labor of love. We still have to make sure that they're all level. And I realize I've got some vinyl on some and we've got some issues with some. They're just on there just for video sake. But check it out. I love it. We did good. I can't wait to get a whole bunch of cups in and out processed. Look at that. Oh, not that big clump, but look at that glitter. That is awesome glitter. So, Here's my six cup turner station. Got the workbench at Harbor Freight. It's been a labor of love. I'm going to edit the video, post um, all of the things that we use to get this thing created, and hopefully, this will help everybody who wants to build one of these to know step by step what to do please don't forget to subscribe like this video and please stay tuned for more videos I am mayhem bling so I do all kinds of crafts not just tumblers so please stay tuned and watch my videos. Have a great week. Love y'all.